Hey there, thank you for stopping by to check out another one of my videos. Got a really fun one here in the works for you, and that is seeing how far can we make consistent hits with a 1x red dot on top of a fighting AR. Now, if you saw my last video, Combat Optic Review, you saw me use an EOTech on 1x and make very consistent hits on a 2 thirds size IPSC at 200 yards. And that inspired me to find out what are the limitations of a 1x optic. So, I fully intend to find that out in this video. Now what we're gonna do in this video will be use this package, show you 100 yard accuracy to give you a baseline of what the rifle and optic setup is capable of. And then from there, we'll push out on steel. I got a 2 thirds IPSC and a full size IPSC that we'll shoot at. I'll run on the 2 thirds IPSC until I can no longer connect. Then I'll swap over to the full size where we'll run out until I can no longer consistently connect. We'll shoot steel at 200 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards, 500 yards, and then if we need to, we can go further, but I really don't know what to expect out of this package. Let me know in the comments, what do you expect this fighting type AR with a 1X red dot to be capable of? What kind of distance do you feel like is realistic for this setup? Let me know, what's your furthest hit with a red dot? I'd love to hear it. Now, while you're doing that, let me just tell you quickly about the rifle and optic setup, and then we'll move into the shooting. So rifle wise, this is a Knight's Armament, SR15, 11 and a half inch SBR, running the Knights QDC CRS suppressor. So really compact package, really meant to be easy to maneuver and fast for close range shooting out to intermediate distances. So definitely not a long range setup. However, I have pushed this rifle out to 800 yards in one of my very first videos. We're gonna be running the AccuTech bipod and I'll be shooting off of a rear bag to remove as much of the shooter error as possible to leave it up to the rifle and optic setup. The optics, this is a primary arms red dot. I've owned this for probably 10 years. I think I picked it up actually off of a match prize table. Didn't really win it, just picked it up. And when I only use a red dot, this is the red dot that I use. So not of a ton of experience here, but it's very representative of really any of the red dots on the market. It's a single dot, it's two MOA, one X magnification. So it's very capable and representative of really any 1X type optic on the market. Ammo, we're gonna be shooting factory, Wolf Gold, 55 grain ammunition. So definitely not match grade ammunition, but this stuff's pretty cheap. A lot of folks use ammunition like this for plinking. So I think it's fair to use that ammunition in this package to get an idea of what a fighting type AR is capable of for distance with a 1X red dot. So from there, let's move down to 100 yards and start shooting. So before we shoot steel, let's put 10 rounds at 100 yards and get an idea of how the rifle groups using the red dot. We've got a two and a half inch circle down there that I'll be shooting at. It matches up well with the dot. And I've got a 36 yard zero. So in theory, we should be looking for a point of impact about three inches high. So here we go, 10 rounds. Let's go down and take a look at how we did at 100 yards. So here we are. Let's take a close up look at our 100 yard group. You can see all 10 rounds stacked in just above my point of aim. I put the tape measure on that. In total, it's about a four inch group. It's nothing spectacular, but definitely combat accurate. And I think you'll see we're going to be able to push this out the distance no problem. With that 36 yard zero, you can see my impacts are all high, and it looks like I'm high by about four inches. So in the ballpark of where we should be with a 36 yard zero. From here, let's push out the steel. So really quick, I thought it'd be good to give you a frame of reference for the targets that we're shooting. On my left hand side is a two thirds IPSC. I'll start shooting this and I'll shoot it as far out as I can make consistent hits. Once I can no longer consistently connect with a two thirds IPSC, I'll transition over to the full size IPSC. So just a frame of reference of how these targets actually look compared to an individual. So how about we push out to 200 yards? I've got 10 rounds loaded up. Let's put these on that 2 thirds IPSC. I'm gonna hold pretty much dead center and see how well we connect.
10 for 10 on a two-third zip stick at 200 yards. Very easy. So we move back to 300 yards. I've got 10 rounds loaded up. I'm going to start on the two-third zip stick. The dot pretty well covers it up, but I'm going to try to favor top edge. With this 36-yard zero on my shorter barrel, I feel like my 300-yard impact is going to be just below my point of aim. So I'm going to try to favor high, but it's a challenge with that two-third zip stick. Impact. Turn the dot down. There we go. It's a much better aiming point. And so we had two misses at 300 yards. Not sure where we missed, but very doable 300 yards with a red dot. So we connected really well at 200 and 300 yards. Now I've pushed back to 400, and my dot is really obscuring a lot of the target out there. Also with this 36 yard zero, now I'm dropping below my point of aim, so I've got a favor high, but it's hard to get a frame of reference using just a red dot. So I'll start with a handful of rounds with two thirds zip stick. If we can't connect there, I'll go to the full size. In these first couple rounds, I'm going to favor probably about six inches above the plate. No wind out here. Man, it's impossible to see my misses. One more. Now we got two impacts. Let's go to the full size. Miss. We didn't lock back on empty, but much easier to make impacts on the full size target. I think we'll try to push out to 500. So here we are, back at 500 yards. I got the full size zip stick out there and the 1x red dot. Let's put 10 rounds down there and see if we can connect at this distance. According to my ballistics calculator, my drop from my 36 yard zero is about 60 inches. So I'm going to try to favor about two plates high. It is extremely calm out here tonight, so I'm going to hold no windage and see if we can connect. Back to the first round. Nope. Yeah. Just a little bit left. Two plates, dead, and hold. an impact. Nope. Impossible to see what's going on. There's an impact.
I believe that was an impact. So maybe four at 500 yards. We'll have to review the footage through the Tacticam from the GoPro, but very difficult at this distance. So how about that? An 11 and a half inch AR shooting 55 grain ammunition using a 1X red dot making somewhat consistent hits at 500 yards. You gotta let me know in the comments. How did that stack up to your expectations? Did the rifle and setup underperform or overperform based on what you expected? Really quick, I'll run through the shooting performance and then I'll give you my opinion on how it was to shoot this package at distance. So at 100 yards, you saw a four inch group, four MOA in my opinion. Not great, but it's representative of what a fighting AR is capable of, especially with the 1X optic. This 1X did me no favors holding on the target, so I likely didn't have a consistent hold. And 55 grain ammunition isn't match grade. So I'll take that 4M away, it is what it is, and then we'll push it out the distance. At 200 yards, you saw very consistent performance on the two-third Zipsic. I had no problem seeing the target, no problem holding on the target, and that 36 yard zero performed very well. Just hold center and make those hits at 200 yards. Really excited about that. Then we pushed out to 300 yards where we still had solid shooting performance. We went eight for 10 on the two thirds Zipsic. Very easy to actually see the target. It was easy to hold on the target. I favored just a little bit high because I felt like that 36 yard zero was gonna be dropping just a little bit below my point of aim. So very impressed with the shooting performance there. Then we moved out to 400 yards, and that's where things got a little bit more challenging. So at 400 yards, I only went two for four on the two-thirds Zipsic. It was really hard to see that target and get a consistent hold, and even harder to spot my misses, so it was hard to correct. I transitioned over to the full-size Zipsic, where we went four out of six. So in my opinion, very solid performance on a full-size Zipsic at 400 yards. Very doable and quite consistent. Then we pushed out to 500 yards, and that's where things really got challenging. We only connected four out of 10 times, and it was impossible to get a consistent hold above the plate, impossible to spot my impacts or my misses to make corrections. So 500 yards, sure we made some hits, but there was a lot of luck in that, and it was not repeatable. So in summary, I'm very impressed with the shooting performance of this package. Certainly these were very favorable conditions, shooting prone off of a bipod with very little, if any, wind. It doesn't get better than this for pushing this package to distance, but I actually didn't expect to make any hits at 500 yards. I expected three to 400 to be the max, so getting four hits at 500, I thought was pretty cool. Now, my thoughts on where this package would actually make sense. So if you think back to my combat optic review, I was a huge fan of the EOTech with the magnifier for the flexibility. Ditch the magnifier, save the weight, shoot fast up close and you've got the potential to push the distance. So I think in this video we saw it's very possible to push a package like this out to distance. In my opinion though, two to 300 yards is the max distance I would feel confident taking a shot on a practical size IPSC type target. Anything beyond that, it's impossible to actually see the target and identify what you're shooting. It's impossible to see your impacts or your misses and correct off of just my confidence level really dropped off when I got past two to 300 yards. Again, that 36 yard zero paired really well. So pretty much point and shoot out to two to 300. That's another reason that for me, I would call that my cutoff is I could hold on the target and not above in space. At four and 500 where I'm favoring high, the consistency just wasn't there. Maybe a reticle like the EOTech with the BDC dots would make it better, but on a single dot red dot, two to 300 for me is the max. Now. The downsides to this, definitely visibility to the target, definitely the ability to make corrections, take measurements, and identify the target. But there's a lot of pros here. This is a very lightweight and handy rifle when you ditch the bipod. This is a great fighting package. So you can shoot fast up close. And then if you do have to push out to distance or you have a spotter or some binoculars that you can use for target ID and maybe help with your corrections, then sure, it's very possible to push this package a little bit further. Now, that said, we'll wrap up. If you enjoyed this kind of content, I'd love it if you'd help support the channel, and it's your interaction that does that. So I'd love it if you'd subscribe to catch my future videos. I think I'm gonna do something similar to this in the future with an ACOG and see how that BDC goes out to distance. So love a subscribe. Also, would appreciate a like, or let me know in the comments, what did you think? I love the interaction with you. It's a lot of fun to chat in the comments, but another cool place that's fun to chat is through Instagram, through the direct messenger. 
on there, you can find me at Mountains Mullets America, and I've had a lot of great conversations. I post a lot of content about what am I working on and some behind the scenes type stuff. So catch me over there on Mountains Mullets America on Instagram, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you'll join me in my next video. Thank you.